Thank you very much, uh, Johnny, for organizing this wonderful uh, event. And it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to, to be the official host here. Um, when I went back to Poland for the first time in 1983, March of 1983, uh, immediately after Stan when uh, Yuri Andropov was the General Secretary of the Communist Party in the Soviet Union and Wojciech Jaruzelski was the dictator of Poland, I sat with my aunt who recounted the story um, that Jan Kawczynski, the uh, brother of my grandfather, uh, hid Jewish friends and neighbors on his estate. And one day he was coming back uh, and his neighbor stopped him and said, don't go, don't go back, the Germans have surrounded your farm. And he said, I have to go back because my wife and daughter are there. And when he went back, uh, the Germans made him, first of all, uh, take off his officer's boots, uh, they made him dig a grave, and they made him watch as they shot his 12-year-old daughter, then they shot his wife, then they shot him. And his crime was helping and protecting Jewish friends and neighbors. And the reason that is so difficult for me to contemplate and evaluate is because I speak to you as the father of a 12-year-old daughter, Alexis, who I take every year to Poland. This will be our sixth holiday in the row now to Sopot, so that she understands Poland and Polish culture. To those of you in this room who are fathers, you will recognize with me how important that relationship that we have with our daughters. I think most of the fathers in this room would quite happily give up their lives to protect their daughters. Uh, the relationship and love that a father has to his daughter is, of course, indescribable. So it was a very counterintuitive thing that Jan Kowczynski did. Poland was the only country in occupied Europe where there was the death penalty for helping Jewish people. And so many Poles knew that they were taking the risk, not just with their own lives, but also potentially sacrificing their children in the process of helping their Jewish friends and neighbors. This story was said to me in 1983, and it became very deeply embedded in my psyche, and I never spoke about it until Johnny Daniels invited me to his home for a kosher meal. It was the first time in my life that I've been <clears throat> around a, a table having a kosher meal, and I think I was the only non-Jewish person uh, in that dining room. <clears throat> and being surrounded uh, with, with Johnny's friends, suddenly that story, which was said to me over 30 years ago, came to the fore of my mind, and I recounted it. Johnny then asked me repeatedly for the next year or so to give him more details. And like so many other Poles, I refused. He kept coming back to me over and over again. Telephone calls, emails, letters, please give us more information. We want to investigate this and make sure your family is recognized. But I refused for over a year because many Poles, we we celebrate and cherish what our families did and their sacrifices, but we're very reticent about raking these things up and going through the experiences again. But anyway, after a year of pestering me, I relented and I gave him the story and he investigated and it ended up in my family being acknowledged at the Warsaw Zoo at a ceremony with Mr. Morawiecki and Prezes Kaczynski and others for them. So we celebrate the contribution of Poles and Christians who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect their Jewish friends and neighbors. And just this morning, uh, when I was having my Polish lesson uh, with my Polish teacher, Mrs. Wątrubska, who was sitting there, please stand up, Mrs. Wątrubska. <laughs> I go 
go through torture twice a week with my Polish lessons. It's the most difficult language in the world to learn. But she's very, she's very patient with me, Mrs. Montrowska. But just, just um, talk, talk, talking to Mrs. Montrowska, she told me the story that her mother was taking food um, to the forest to help Jewish friends and neighbours who were hiding in the forest. And of course, Mrs. Montrowska and her family haven't been acknowledged. I'm lucky because as a member of parliament, Johnny got to know me and my family has been recognised. But there are millions of Polish families, hundreds of thousands of Polish families like Mrs. Wontropska's family, who help their Jewish friends and neighbours, but as yet nobody knows about the sacrifices and the dangers that they got into in order to help their Jewish friends and neighbours. What Johnny has given me is something very special. He has given me the ability and the encouragement, the courage and the fortitude to start talking about these things with my daughter, Alexis, because it is so important that we share with them the extraordinary sacrifices that our ancestors went through and warn them of the potential consequences for their generation if good people don't stand up against evil. I am absolutely shocked and horrified that in this country today, in the United Kingdom, we still have anti-Semitic comments and we have anti-Semitic crimes. It's quite breathtaking, actually, when you think about it, that in this day and age, this sort of thing could still continue. And we must always share with the next generation the importance of standing up against anti-Semitism. So thank you, Johnny, for that very much. And I've just come here really today to support you and everything that you do in order to bring Jews and Poles together. And I will end by saying this, and I'm glad this is being recorded, but I want to have a go at the BBC, <laughs> which is one of my pet favourite hobby horses. I have a file that thick in my office of correspondence that I have entered into with the British Broadcasting Corporation, always trying to correct their analysis when they refer to Polish death camps. There is no such thing as a Polish death camp. These were concentration camps set up by the Germans, run by the Germans, in a German-occupied Poland. And I think it's very, very important for the BBC and others when they are making references to what happened during the Second World War to ensure that they get their facts straight. Because we in Poland, I say, the Poles are very, very proud of the resistance and the bravery that they showed during the war standing up to the Nazi occupation. Thank you very much.